Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Happy Sunday. My name is Dave Little, and I'm not a pastor. I'm not a professional speaker. I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin, and God has laid it on my heart to use my YouTube channel on a weekly basis to share with you all my experiences in my imperfect journey with Him. In the past several weeks, we have been talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and today's discussion will focus on kindness as the latest in our series. We learn in Proverbs 19.22 that, that God tells us what is desirable in a man is his kindness. Like the other fruits, the Bible shows us that God exhibits this quality toward man, And then God instructs us to respond to his Holy Spirit by showing kindness to others. Uh, Now, I did some image searching today, and I found this cute little image from Psychology Today, which indicates that kindness is the key for a man to get dates. Um, But it's more important than that. The kindness of God is evident throughout the Bible. One of the great descriptions of God's kindness can be found in Ephesians 2. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. God has lavished his kindness upon us through Christ. He shows us sympathy. He shows us benevolence. He shows us generosity. Uh, Many of the things we learned last year in studying the attributes of God, and it's pretty awesome and pretty mind-boggling to think about it. The God of the universe loves us. And the God of the universe shows us kindness, even in our state of rebellion. While we were still dead in our transgressions, God reached out to us, showed us his kindness, and restored us into a relationship with him. He forgave our sins. He cares about our needs. He gives us an eternal future with him to look forward to. Uh, That is the kindness of God showed even toward those of us who live openly and actively in rebellion toward him. So, how do we respond to this? We respond to this by showing kindness to others. Paul continues to explore this in Ephesians chapter 4. When he writes, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that's good for edification, according to the need of the moment. And he goes on to say, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So there you have it. Our kindness towards one another is a response to the kindness that God has shown us. The God of the universe is kind to us. We ought to be kind to others. So how do we show kindness to others? What are the practical applications of these two two passages about how God has shown kindness to us? and how we are called upon to show kindness to others. And what we learn from Ephesians chapter 4 is a number of ways that we can show kindness to others, starting off with our speech. Our speech should be edifying. Our speech should build each other up. And I am reminded of the, uh, the illustration of seeing someone who is morbidly, grossly obese. <laughs> uh, funny story behind that. I you know, have uh, had weight issues in my own life off and on related to some other health issues. And, and at times I have controlled those well. And at times I have not 
controlled those as well. And uh, a number of years ago, I was in the hospital making rounds, and I saw a patient who was a uh, an older gentleman who was having some confusion and and some uh, and, and some uh, early signs of dementia. And I walked into the room and I said, "Good morning, sir. My name is Doctor Little." And he said, "Well, you don't look very little." And I patted my belly and said, "Yeah, I'm." You know, you're, you're, you're right, sir. I'm uh, packed on a few extra pounds here, and I'm not uh, as little as I once was. Now, the next day, I came into the same room and, and, and saw the same gentleman. And in his state of confusion and, and in, the, in the declining mind, you know, one of the things that happens to the declining mind is that you lose the, you lose the filter, and I said, uh, good morning, sir. How are you today? Dr. Little here. And he said, looked at me and said, you're grossly obese. <laughs> and I just laughed. His wife was in the room and she was mortified that uh, he would say such a thing. But I remembered that it was, you know, his, his recollection uh, somewhat dimly of the conversation we had had the day before that caused him to look at me and say, you're grossly obese. And that was not an example of, of edifying speech. And the, and the point of this illustration is, number one, we may be right. Yes, I was, I was heavy at the time. Um, number two, you may have the right. There's no law that says you can't look at someone and say you're grossly obese. Uh, you certainly have that right. Uh, but the fact that you may be right and you may have the right doesn't make it right. And under normal circumstances, I would not go into a, uh, into a patient's room or into any social encounter and look at someone and say, you're grossly obese. Um, our speech is to be more edifying than that, even if there is a grain of truth involved. We're called upon also to eliminate destructive speech. Uh, some of the things that are specifically called out in Ephesians 4 would be slander, lying, gossiping, spreading rumors. Ephesians 4 also uses the word clamor. Let all clamor be put away from you. What's clamor? I didn't know what clamor was. It's kind of a fun word to say. Uh, clamor, when you look that up in, uh, in the language derivations, is actually the word for shouting or raising your voice. Um, very infrequently does shouting provide anything edifying to any conversation. Uh, so get rid of it. Uh, and the third word that's used here in Ephesians 4 is the term malice. Get rid of all malice. Uh, we think of malice as being something that is ill-intentioned. But again, in, in reviewing the language, the, the term that they use for malice is used other places to talk about depravity or perversion. Uh, you know, don't tell dirty jokes. Don't uh, let your speech be seasoned with innuendos or 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 the or the like. Uh, those are again not episodes or not evidences of kindness. Uh, so we are to get rid of these patterns of destructive speech: lying, shouting, dirty jokes, things like that that don't demonstrate kindness. Uh, the second thing that Ephesians 4 calls us to is to examine our attitudes. Dropped in a little computer lingo here. Attitudes to be deleted. Bitterness, wrath, anger. We should instead replace these with kindness, tenderness, tenderheartedness, forgiveness. Forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. And finally, Ephesians 4 calls us to look at our actions. How do we treat other people? Is it with kindness and tenderheartedness and forgiveness, or is it with these other uh, negative implications? And so that lead me to, uh, to reflect on this. Um, and, and something that I'm guilty of, and something that you all may also indulge in from time to time, do you ever do things 
or say things to people that you know are going to be irritating? Do you ever just deliberately push people's buttons? Uh, you know, if I, if I bring this issue into the discussion, it's just going to inflame things and aggravate things. Um, and is it really addressing the underlying issue or, or resolving the, the underlying matter at hand? Or is it just something you say to, to be provocative or something you do to be, uh, to be irritating? Um, my one son, uh, my middle son, Chris, was a uh, pretty good uh, high school basketball player back in the day. Uh, he is now a psychology teacher. He has a degree in psychology, and we knew that he was an amateur psychologist as early as seventh or eighth grade, because when he got on the basketball court and, and he got into a one-on-one -on -one matchup with somebody, uh, you know, he just started immediately with just little taunts and just little um, little provocations and, and little irritations that he would uh, that he would lay on people just to kind of get into their heads and and mess with their minds and and um, you know as as his father watching from the stands I knew exactly what he was doing and I would have so much cruel fun watching him get into the heads of these other kids and you know usually at some point along the middle of the third quarter. Um, there would be a shove or there would be a forearm shot and, and my son would just throw his arms back and, and do the big flop and land on the floor. And, and, you know, nine times out of 10, that led to a, a whistle and a foul. And I just knew that Chris was, uh, was out there getting people's goats and, and just messing with people's minds. And, and it was really a kind of, kind of a fun thing to watch at the time as a, as a basketball dad, but, um, you know, do we do that in our real lives? Do we, do we, do we, you know, get under people's skin and, and try and, you know, provoke people to, uh, to respond to things that we know are going to be, um, if not destructive, then at least provocative, or, or do we instead, uh, treat others with empathy, move toward others, uh, look to uplift and, and edify the people that we interact with? Um, kindness is aggressive. Kindness takes the initiative to restore others and, and uplift others. When somebody is um, acting or speaking or, or behaving in ways that are undesirable or provocative, um, you know, sometimes we want to escalate that and, and confront that and you, you know, get angry and respond in anger to that. Uh, that's pretty easy. It's just as easy to kind of turn a deaf ear to that and ignore it and, and let things slide. Letting things slide is not an act of kindness. Kindness is proactive. Kindness takes the initiative to restore and uplift. Just as God reached into our lives while we were still sinners, we should reach into the lives of others with compassion, with a spirit of tenderness, in an effort to meet them where they are at. And people will respond to that in meaningful ways. And that is the definition of kindness. That's the kindness that God showed to us, reaching out and embracing us while we were still in a state of rebellion. And that is the kindness that God, in Proverbs 19, calls us to show to others. And this is the result of his spirit at work in our lives. He softens our hearts. He allows us to see what's happening in the emotional lives of other people through his eyes, through the eyes of compassion, through the eyes of empathy. Um, and as he works his spirit in us to reveal those things to us, that empowers us to respond to others with kindness in spite of others being provocative and others being um, unworthy of that kindness because nobody is more unworthy of, of the kindness of God than me and my rebellion. And if God can accept me, then he can challenge me to show kindness to others as his spirit works in my life. 
Uh, so that is what we have to uh, to go over today. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. And hopefully these uh, these thoughts from the Word of God will, uh, will challenge your lives as they have challenged my life. Um, thank you again for listening. Please feel free to leave your questions and, and comments in the in the comments box below. Um, it's always great to hear from different people with different opinions and, and ways that uh, I can make these talks better or things that I may have overlooked in, in my reflections or ways that these reflections have been challenging or encouraging in the lives of others. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And when you like these videos, that uh, promotes them in the YouTube algorithms that uh, prompt search results to show up for others. Um, and if you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key. And that will cause you to be notified when new content is posted for the channel. Uh, so that is it for today's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Thank you all again for joining us. We'll see you next week. And until then, God bless you all and go in peace.